Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to begin an introduction to understanding research questions. There's going to be more than one video on this. In this video, we're going to look at traits and de defining research questions and also traits. And in a future video, we'll look at different types of research questions. But to keep things short and simple, we're going to do it in several parts so that no video is too long. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So I already kind of shared with you the overview. We're going to define what research questions are and we're going to share some of the traits or characteristics of research questions. And as I've already always told you in the past, you need to remember that experts do not always agree on how to do these things, but there are often components or pieces that we all agree need to be there. And that is what is the most important as you go forward in this presentation. So let's start by defining a research question. Research questions are used to take the research problem of a study, of a paper, and to break it down into smaller pieces. You don't really solve problems when you're doing, you know, the dissertation, theoretical research. In reality, what you're doing is you are answering the questions, you are answering questions about the problem. And you use those answers to give you ideas of how to address the problem. So you don't solve the problem directly per se, most of the time. And also another thing you have to keep in mind is, is that you have to develop a scope of your study. You know, a problem can be very large and you can't address all the pieces of a problem. However, in one paper, you can deal with several aspects of that problem through well-defined research questions that can be used as one study that is looking at a pro that can be one study of many studies that are looking at a problem. So sometimes if a student has an idea that's a little too ambitious for one paper, it might be valuable for several papers. So you do with a handful of questions in one, in one paper, and then you do with a handful of questions in another paper, and what's happened is that over time, you are building a expertise and a knowledge base about that particular problem that you are addressing. Um, many students don't quite see this when they first get into research. They just want to do their one paper and be, and you know, finish it and be, and be done. But a little bit more of an ambitious way to look at it is how can I do several papers that deal with several different research questions about a particular problem? So in other words, if you look at the second bullet, research questions help to focus a study. It's like having a shopping list when you go to the grocery store. You can naturally just buy whatever you want and you could be there forever per se. But if you have a shopping list, it is very clear exactly what you are there for and what you are trying to do. And research questions provide that focus when you are dealing with complex problems in the world. So at the bottom of the screen, we have an example of a problem and a research question, not the best research question as you will see as we go through this, but it just addresses the point. So our particular problem here is about cell phone addiction. That's our problem. And we also are identifying that this is a, that this is common among university students. So this is a problem. Often, you know, we agree that addiction is bad. Cell phone addiction is one example. And so the research question right here at the bottom is, what are students' perceptions? What, what's their attitudes, their beliefs of cell phone addiction? Again, this is not the best research question. It kind of gets you going. But one thing you're going to learn is that there are certain components that need to be a part of your research question. If they're not in the actual research question, they need to be addressed somewhere in the paper as well. And we're going to see that as we go forward. So as I told you a few minutes ago, you have your problem this guy up here at the top, and we break him into pieces using our research questions. And there are several different types. We're gonna learn about that in a future video, but these research questions help to break down what you are trying to do. And I already explained that, but I'll give you a picture. Each one of these research questions here are taking a different look at the same problem and trying to answer are trying to address or give insights into the problem in a slightly different way. That is the heart of asking a good research question. You're trying to find different ways. So you might have different populations, you might use different 
analytical tools. You might, you know, have different variables there. All these will be addressed inside the actual research question. And like I said before, we'll learn more about the details of different types of research questions in a future video. Let's continue. So we're going to take a look at traits of research questions. One thing is that a research question must be, you can see it right here, feasible. That means you're able to answer it. This is a common roadblock for many, many students in that they ask really cool research questions that nobody can answer. So I have an example right here on the screen. What is the meaning of life? Again, in a quantitative study, how would you operationalize that? How would you measure the meaning of life? You know, again, uh, that's going to be very, very challenging. How are you going to define that? What do you mean by meaning? Okay. You know, this is a question that, you know, very interesting. Many people would love to know the meaning and the purpose of life. However, in the context of quantitative research, where you're trying to, you know, observe variables and calculate means and standard deviations, this would be very difficult to answer. Now, of course, I don't want to be overly negative and say that, you know, it's impossible, but for the average student, you're probably not going to be able to address a question like this. In the next bullet, we have what is considered a little bit more feasible research question. And so we're asking here, what are students' opinions? So we're asking, what are the students' opinions? This is kind of like my population here. This is kind of like what I want to know about the quality of the food at the university. So this is kind of what I'm measuring. I want to know about food quality. And this is the location, if you will. Now, this is much more within the range of the typical student's ability to answer. You know, make a survey, ask some questions about the food, you know, make some survey items about food quality, maybe use a Likert scale. Very doable, very feasible. In other words, you're able to answer it. That is the most important thing when you're trying to determine feasible. And of course, feasible is a subjective term. You're not going to find two people or two advisors or two teachers who are going to agree on the feasibility of a question. However, this is something you need to be aware of and it, you'll be hard pressed to find someone who disagrees that you need to be aware of this. Another thing is clarity. And this is another one of those fuzzy things that's measuring uh, understandability or how understandable it is. This is, of course, subjective again. And so in the next bullet, I have an example here of an unclear question. Is a transformational curriculum effective? Now, here's the problem. What does transformational mean? If you don't explain it in the question, it needs to be somewhere within your paper. What do you mean by effective? Again, you might not put it in the question, but you need to define this somewhere in the paper. Right now, taken out of the context of an actual study, this is unclear. Now again, if you have the appropriate tools within your paper, you can salvage this question to make it useful and meaningful um, for your audience. But right now, it's kind of isolated and it's not going to make sense for the average person. And so there are different ways that you can go about defining things. One is, to use the dictionary definition, and the other one is to make an operational definition. Dictionary, I think we're all familiar with what that means, what you find in you know, the, the Merriam-Webster dictionary or whatever, that is a predefined way of defining a term. But the more important one for our, purpose, our purposes is operational. And this is where you as the researcher define your terms. This is very, very common at least in my field, to be done in the chapter one, where you clearly define the different terms that you're going to use in the study. Uh, very, very common when you're writing a thesis and dissertation in your chapter one. If you're writing an article in my field, it's very common to do this in your review of literature, um, when you're trying to share what others have done in relation to your topic, but you have to define these things. We have to know what you mean by transformational curriculum. We have to know what you mean by effective. These terms need to be addressed somewhere. Again, different experts are not going to agree on where, but they're probably going to agree, agree that you need to do it. And so when you operationalize your terms, you're explaining what they mean and also how you will measure them. So again, this is getting more into your methodology, how you're going to measure these terms as well. So down here, you might say that one of the problems with this research question out of context is, what do we mean by cell phone addiction? That might be a problem right now because it's not clearly defined. 
okay? And for some people, you might wanna even explain what you mean by perceptions. Again, you might not address it in the research question, but you need to address it somewhere. And even for people who are really picky, what kind of students are you talking about here? Um, university students, high school students, graduate students, freshmen only, sophomores only, all undergrad, you know, uh, doctoral students, etc. These are all things that have to be specified in one way or the other to where they're agreed upon in terms of how you present them, present them as the reader and for the appreciation of, uh, not the, as the writer, excuse me, and for the appreciation of the reader. That's how it needs to be done. Now, on this page, I'm giving you some ways that you can strengthen the clarity of your research questions. So some things you might want to include, and again, I want to reiterate, I want to repeat that these things might appear within the question itself, but they need to appear somewhere in the document. They have to be there. So you got to address who's your target population, your objectives, the action you're going to take, the contribution, like the significance of this, what's the big deal? And you got to define your measures. We already talked about operationalizing. So the bold is going to be our target population, italics is our objectives. If it's underlined once, it's our significance or contribution. And if it's underlined twice, I'm defining how I'm going to my measures. So among university students, that is my target population. During the 2022-2023 school year, that's my significance. In other words, this is fresh. This is brand new data. This is a new contribution. This is not last year or 10 years ago. This is current. So that is my contribution. What was the average height? This is my objectives, my action that I'm going to take. The average height in terms of centimeters. So this is how I'm going to measure it in centimeters and also an average. So that is the contribution, excuse me, the, the definition, the objective, and also the definition of how I'm going to measure things. And so this research question is probably clear for most people. Again, I'm sure there's a critic out there who will say this is not quite good enough, that I need to include something that is missing. But for the most part, some of the main ideas and terms are addressed here. And of course, this is feasible because I'm measuring height. All right. That's not some fuzzy idea. That's something that's very quantitative in terms of what it is. And it's not hard to deal with and address. And so this is some of the four traits, some of the four tools that need to be a part of a research question right here. This is what a research question is. And again, I want to repeat myself. They might not all be in the question, but they all need to be in the paper. That is what is important. So in this video, to wrap this up, we took a look at defining what a research question is and also looking at the traits of a research question. So a research question, the primary purpose of research questions is to break down a problem into measurable questions that you can also answer uh, quantitatively because we're focused on quantitative research. Uh, for qualitative, it's mostly the same idea, but it's still different. And so as you are dealing with questions, you have to make sure that they're feasible so that you know, you're able to deal with them and that you also are able, they're understandable, that you're able to, you have defined your terms, you know, you have a certain limited scope in terms of what you're asking in order to have success. Also, there are other things that can be, but may not always be there, like the target population, the objectives, the contribution, and of course, defining how you're going to measure things. These things work together to help to make research questions that your audience is able to understand and appreciate. And you have to remember that when you're doing academic writing, you must present things in a certain format because that is the agreed upon standard for communication among people who participate in doing and reading research. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Thank you so much for watching and take care.